Hello there, folks. You may have already seen this speech in other outlets from Leah Nietzsche, the Conservative MP for Great Grimsby. But uh, I am just going to upload it to my own channel for my own safekeeping. As a reference, I will refer back to this speech as perhaps the most ludicrous speech ever given in the House of Commons. So I learned a couple of crucial things from this speech. Firstly, that the people of Grimsby say it how they see it. All of them. Every last one of them. I didn't know that. I didn't know that the people of Grimsby were so honourable. So truthful. So thank you to the people of Grimsby for that. And thank you to Leah Nietzsche for making me aware of that. And I've also learned a really crucial lesson. Um, that you don't need to appear to have two brain cells to rub together to become a member of parliament in the Grimsby area. Now, I don't know what that says for the people of Grimsby. I don't want to cast dispersions on the, uh, on the place. But I would hope that the people of Grimsby watch this, take note, and get rid of this person at the next general election. Enjoy this. This is really one for the ages. If you haven't seen this, relish it. Enjoy it. Leonici. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, I had to speak in the House today because I cannot see where the evidence is where Boris Johnson misled Parliament knowingly, intentionally or recklessly. I'm from Grimsby and I have to say it as I see it. Order, order. It is important to listen to the Honourable Lady, Leonici. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I have to say it as I see it, because that's what my constituents would want me to do. Yes, I have read it, and I think that is quite an appalling question to ask a member in this House. The reality is, is that, is that Boris Johnson did not knowingly or intentionally mislead this House. The reason the reason, if people would like to listen, that I say that is that last year for six months I was one of Boris Johnson's parliamentary private secretaries. And I was the only member of parliament who was with him for the whole day on the publication of the Sue Gray report. When he read that... Very grateful uh, for the Honourable Lady giving way. She says, having read the report, that she sees no evidence of Boris Johnson's wrongdoing. Does she agree with me that there is none so blind as those who will not see? Well, I thank the Honourable Gentleman for his comments, but for those people who haven't got anything uh, more interesting to do than actually spend their time reading the whole of the report, of which I did, I'm, I am aiming this at members of the public is that I, I, I suggest people go to pages 85 to 88 and actually read the quotes. Um, the reality is, is that there were some people who had parties. Sadly, those people were unelected officials who still should have stood by at making sure that they weren't uh, having ministers potentially in difficult situations by advising them incorrectly. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. The Prime Minister headed all of those people. He was the team leader for all those working at Number 10 and in the Cabinet Office who were at those parties. During lockdown, I volunteered at West Middlesex Hospital, taking food to the wards because the staff working in them were not allowed to go to the canteen and they certainly were directed by the chief executive of the hospital trust that they could have no parties, not even leaving parties, not even wine Fridays. They had no parties for that whole period. Does the honourable member have any comprehension of what her constituents in the same position were feeling like when they heard the evidence? Yeah. I thank the Honourable Lady, and yes, I do. Um, but what we need to look at here 
is actually what I witnessed firsthand. And what had happened was that people advising the then Prime Minister at no point advised him that there were parties. They advised him again and again. They had, no, I won't give away at the moment, thank you. They advised him again and again that no rules were broken and that guidance was followed at all times. Everybody in this place knows no minister stands at that dispatch box and knowingly misleads. They have to take counsel from people who advise them, many of whom who are giving legal advice. They know that to be the truth, but the public don't necessarily know that that is the case. And if you are a Prime Minister and you are advised in that way again and again, no matter how you question, then you have to stand at the dispatch box and actually give those statements because that is what you've been legally advised to do. Now, people may not like that in a moment. People may not like that, but that is the truth and that is why I'm standing here and saying this. The sad thing is, is that many people who gave that advice are still working in and around number 10 and Whitehall, but we don't know who they are because they are not a high profile politician. Yes, I will. I'm very grateful to the Honourable Lady for giving way, and I wonder if she might reflect that it sounds to those of us here as if what she is trying to do is to deflect blame from Boris Johnson and put it on unelected members of staff. And people here and people at home may find that, to put it mildly, rather unedifying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I thank the Honourable Lady. What I would say, actually, that I've had the privilege to work with many um, unelected officials, special advisers and civil servants who have been very professional and have worked very hard and are very good at giving uh, accurate advice. But we all know from the evidence within here that there were those that didn't. And we can't shy away from that. We know that's the case. So, the Honourable Gentleman. I thank, I thank my Honourable Friend for giving way. And just to build slightly on the point she's making, the report needs to be narrow in scope. It is about what the Prime Minister said to this House. And I wonder if I could draw her attention to paragraph 20 on page 71 which seeks to go much further than that. It talks about, it's not what the Prime Minister said, it's the interpretation given it by members of this House, by the media and by the public. The prime, former Prime Minister Boris Johnson cannot be held responsible for what people thought he may have meant. He should be held responsible if this report is to hold any water on what he said. Honourable friend, for that, and of course, we, we we really must hear what the honourable lady has to say. It's not fair just to um, uh, much her away when she's making her argument. Lea Nietzsche. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I thank my right honourable friend for identifying that because, of course, he's absolutely right. And I have to say, uh, as I do respect the amount of hard work that's been put into this report, but throughout, if I was grading this in my former job as a college lecturer, um, it is not impartial. The way it is written, Boris Johnson claimed, Boris Johnson purported, this is not impartial language. And therefore, I believe that, um, in my opinion, that this report does not give um, an impartial report in the way that it is written. But to go back to my um, uh, original discussion, that on the day that the Sue Gray report was, was written, uh, uh, was, uh, was published, um, the Prime Minister uh, at the time was horrified that he'd read what was going on. At no time, and in here, at no time did anybody give on oath or evidence that they reported that there were parties or there was rule breaking to the Prime Minister. Now, some people might say, well, he lives in number 10 or lived in number 10. He should have known. Well, actually, uh, those people who have worked in number 10 will know that it is a rabbit warren of rooms, thick walls, people are working there, running the country, and 
the Prime Minister is not the caretaker of the building. It is not their job to go around and look in rooms and decide who may be working and who may not be working. In fact, in that Sue Gray report, it did state that those unelected officials uh, were rude in a moment, were rude to doorkeepers and staff, but yet at no time, if there were rules being broken and they were seen, number 10 is full of police officers, full of security people. Why did nobody report this to the Prime Minister that, so that he was aware of it? So that, yes, I will give way. The Honourable Lady for giving way. <coughs> She makes a very good point that the Prime Minister was not the caretaker of the building at number 10. But the, caretake, the Prime Minister at the time was the caretaker of the nation's health, the nation's well-being and the nation's trust. And in that, he let people down, he misled this House, and that is why this report has come up with the conclusions that it did. Mm -hmm. well, I thank the Honourable Lady for her comments. Um, I, I don't agree because I'm from Grimsby, I can only say it as I see it. And I saw on that day of the publication of the report that Boris Johnson had not been aware of these parties that had been going on. Now, go on. Uh, Lady, I'm from Birmingham and I say it as I see it. Do you think there's any chance that Boris Johnson could also have lied to her? <laughs> <laughs> Lady, actually, uh, no, I don't believe he did. I think, I think, actually, I'm a very good, uh, a, a very good uh, uh, a person who can actually see character. And I saw what was going on in and around Number Ten on that day. And sadly, I believe that unelected officials, some of them, because many, many are very, very good and very professional, but some of them made a choice not to inform the then Prime Minister because they wanted to cover their own backs. I'm very, very sad to say. I'm very grateful to Honourable Lady. Is she aware that in 2019, Max Hastings, the editor of the Daily Telegraph, and a Tory, said this about Boris Johnson. Mm. Johnson would not recognise truth, <laughs> whether about his private or political life, if confronted by it, in an identity parade. Isn't the truth that Boris has lied for so, for so long and so often that it can come as no surprise that he's lying in this instance? Yeah. 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 Seeing that, um, I am not a Conservative Party grandee. Uh, I am not somebody who has followed Boris Johnson's political or otherwise career um, for a long time. I'm somebody who came here to actually serve my constituency and my constituents, the majority of whom the reason why I'm here supported Boris Johnson and his policies and his vision for the country. Um, but sadly, what this whole saga seems to be doing in and out of the media is actually, sadly, this is all becoming part of a, a kind of political opportunism for those people who don't like Boris Johnson's approach, don't like Boris Johnson's policies, don't like Boris Johnson's plan. I have to say that that isn't what I'm getting on the doorstep, but perhaps if the opposition had a plan and had the people, maybe they might have a chance of getting into government sometime soon. This actually is about people who want a formidable opponent out of their way because they don't believe they will get into government in any other way. That is my stance. I thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. And despite that speech and all of its content, when it came time to vote, Leah Nietzsche abstained. Yet another Boris Johnson sycophant, terrified of putting their money where their mouth is. Because all they have is their mouth. Cheers for watching. See you again soon.